Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. Off camera, I left Canabris and teleported back to Dresden. Now, the first thing we're going to do is assign a general to our army. Welcome back, Setsuna. As we'll hire some more recruits as well. Alright, we have some new abilities here for the Crusades as well. The Party Teleportation, Amplify Resistance, and Mark of Terror. That's all old news. Our Replenish is new. Recover the Target General's Energy for 10 times Mythic Rank Points. I don't know what our Mythic Rank counts as, as a Legend. So we're Mythic Rank 3, but we don't have this ability. I wonder if we get these as we progress. Or if we're locked out of the rest of them. I assume we're locked out because we don't have access to this one. Which sucks because I really want Mythical Beast back. Last stand would be nice, but it's not necessary since we do have 423 health. Hmm. Alright, uh, Mighty Tempest. All units of the target army take 18d6 times mythic rank physical damage. Call to arms. Adds units of the target army with a total value of 750 times mythic rank. The unit type is chosen randomly from the units that are already present in the army. Go ahead and pop that. Put that on cooldown. Alright, so if I have to move out of the city first. A mass teleportation. Moves the target army to a point on the global map that is unoccupied by enemies. There's two really good uses for this. One, you teleport reinforcements from Dresden to your army that's out and about. Or two, teleport your army to intercept an approaching demon army. 18 day cooldown though. Alright, and Banish. Banishes demon and elemental units from the target army with a total value of 500 times mythic rank. The resulting experience is gained by the general with the highest level that has not already reached level 20. That's a 9 day cooldown. Might as well pop that as well. Actually, let's take a look around the map first. Okay, there's a lot less going on to the north, so I think we're going to march our army north and deal with that and just work our way south. This should be fairly easy to take care of. I don't know if we'll be able to access it from here, or if we have to go here and work our way around. That way, once all this stuff to the north is cleared out, you don't have to be worried about uh, getting attacked from the south. At least that's the plan. Alright, also, Bucephalus leveled up last episode as well. Forgot about it because I was super excited about the 16 other levels uh, my main character got. At level 19, he gets a feat. Athletics and mobility. You know what? I think combat mobility... Probably should have got this earlier on. So you can easily move through a dangerous melee. You get a plus four dodge bonus to armor class against attacks of opportunity caused when you move out of or within a threatened area. Perfect for cycle charging. A condition that makes you lose your dexterity bonus to armor class, if any, also makes you lose dodge bonuses. Then level 20, point into strength, athletics and mobility, and he's done. Alright, uh, let's enter Dresden, deal with any decrees, see if anybody wants to talk, and then we will do Greybor's quest.
Which is also convenient because he's the only companion quest that's to... Actually, the only quest we have currently that's to the east of Dresden. So, it'll be nice to get that taken care of first. Ah, uh, my friend. I should like to request your help. Melia's face remains calm, but her voice trembles with excitement. Remember how much fun we had in Aleutian Ira? We went to the brothel together and had an excellent time there. You did enjoy that little adventure of ours, did you? Well, yeah, we freed a slave and you didn't kill him. Melia licks her parched lips. I wish to invite you to go on another adventure with me. You would be opposed to escorting me to Canabras, my father's old mansion, the place where I spent my childhood. I was just there. That's darn it, Camellia. She lowers her voice to a conspiratorial whisper. I am certain that is the place where I shall finally be able to contact Mariah. Why to Canabra specifically? Because it is what I want, understand? My desire alone must be enough for you. Camellia stops. A shadow of fear crosses her face, but she immediately hides it behind a modest smile. It seems I lost control over myself. I apologize. Over the past few days, I've expended great effort trying to summon Mariah and make her talk. The exertion has taken its toll on me. The Grand Mansion in Canabras, where I grew up, it is a special place. It wasn't extraordinary before, but it has become so for me. It is there that I learned to communicate with spirits and embarked on the path of the shaman. It is where I took Mariah prisoner and bound her to my amulet. I am positive that it is where I shall finally manage to muster all my strength and break the wall Mariah has built against me. And what are we going to do there? Camellia shrugs graciously. I shall try to find a comfortable place for meditation I shall summon Mariah's spirit. I don't know yet how exactly this can be done, but I believe I shall be able to figure it out once we are there. Just winging it? <laughs> also sounds like a potential fight. Alright, I will go to Canabras as soon as I have time to spare. Melia's black eyes shimmer like two lakes in a moonlit night. I thank you, my friend. I shall wait your earliest convenience. It sounds to me that we're going to end up fighting Mariah during that quest. My wounded dragon. During the exploration of the catacombs under an ancient temple, soldiers have come upon a heavily wounded dragon. Someone's been putting the poor creature through agonizing torture for years, driving it mad. The officers are uncertain what to do with the creature. I'm assuming Wendawag would eat it. <laughs> yeah, let's um... Let's heal it. I said healers to the dragon. Priests and druids heal the dragon's body and mind with their magic. The poor thing is still weak and cannot fight. He wants to repay his saviors for their kindness. He's revealed the location of his treasures in hopes that the gold will help the crusaders. By right, the return of the Faultless Daybreak is a sign that promises victory to the crusaders. The glow of this holy relic put on the commander's gear will fill the souls of brave warriors with hope in their... Fill the souls of brave warriors with hope and their hands with power. There we go. It is necessary to decide on which item it will be placed. Ooh. Let's do the scale mail. Alright, and then the fate of the voracious jumble. Then security training. The generals of the crusade will undergo training that will allow them to defend themselves from attacks by demonic assassins. demons, but since we're fighting together, perhaps we could... No, we could not. <laughs> oh, 
Hey, it's this guy. An Ivu. And Targona? And see who's behind, hiding behind Mephistopheles' wings. The most unusual congregation of creatures imaginable appears before your eyes. We do not part on the best of terms in the abyss. Mephistopheles says without bothering to greet you. But since then, you've changed. You have changed your crusade too. You got rid of that unruly power of yours, and the riffraff that swarmed around it like flies. Mortals rarely reject power voluntarily, which makes your achievement especially remarkable. I'm impressed. I stand ready to help you in your final push against the Abyssal Forces. What? Is this legendary? Uh, because I went the legend path? A familiar angel with one demonic wing bows her head before you in greeting. The greetings to you, my liberator. So many different forces have come to your aid in your final stand. I knew I had to be one of them. Zacharias, hero of the First Crusades, is ready to stand under the banner of the Crusaders. The skeleton clad in spellcaster robe says gloomily, his eyes boring into you. So we didn't meet him because I broke a certain relic um, early on in the playthrough. Had I not broken that relic, we could have met him. And in this playthrough, probably killed him. And then our gold dragon buddy. So these are all the other mythic paths. So if you go legendary, or I keep saying legendary, if you go legend path, all the major NPCs of the other paths come to your assistance. That's really cool. I'll gladly help you, child. I remember your kindness and the purity of your thoughts. Guess who's back? Ivy does a little dance, raising each of her four clawed feet one after another. I know I said goodbye and flew away. Actually, she never did say goodbye. I was a little disappointed by that. Like, we saw her grow smaller and smaller as we pursued the legend path. And then she was just gone. There's no, like, final goodbye or anything, which I was a little disappointed about. I know I said goodbye and flew away. But then I heard that absolutely everybody was coming to stand with you. So I thought I should come too. I'm little again, of course. So I can't help you in the fight. But I'll support you as much as I can. And don't you worry about the demons hurting me. Allo, what's his scales? Will keep an eye on me. He doesn't know about that yet, but I know he'll agree. Ivo triumphantly sticks her nose in the air. Lokoth Benoth. A tall, pale man with dark hair, covered in numerous tattoos and bedecked with earrings and other piercings, gives you an insinuating smile. My, my, what a momentous day. What an incredible company of guests. And don't get me started on the host of this little party. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. By the way, I'm Sokoth Benoth, a demon lord. No doubt the first demon lord you've ever met is worth paying any attention to. I met you to deal a delicious blow to the egos of Discari, Baphomet, and my beloved Lady in Shadow by helping you. Alright, so he's the de uh, demonic path. Shamira. Shamira's vivid, fiery red mane seems especially bright today. The demoness looks truly regal with her glowing eyes and proud posture. I've come to flex my muscles a little and to have some fun. Even Illusionire's intrigues can get a little tedious after a while. The ardent dream wishes to shine again. Why have you decided to help me? The existence of the world wound and the growing influence of the demon lords run counter to the interests of hell. They always have. I could not openly help you before, Commander, as your power was affiliated with certain entities and stemmed from an unreliable source. Now it's a completely different story. I am not prohibited from helping a simple mortal. You saved me. What more reason do you need? But I will say this. By rejecting the gift of the cursed Arilu, you have shifted the balance of power. Now you do not belong to any side, or any other side, or any other plane, except for your native material plane. You can choose your own path. This means that various powers can now come to your aid without destabilizing this balance. If hell comes to help you, heaven must do the same, if not more. That is why I am here. I hope that one day I will have amassed enough courage to eliminate Rilu's gift. The angel spreads her demonic wing. I'm not as brave as you, but at least I am ready to stand by your side, shoulder to shoulder with you against the abyss. By rejecting your mythic powers, you've undermined Octicula's authority. Tamira sighs with feigned sadness. 
Creatures from every plane witnessed her argument with Iamade. Virtually any, everyone who could watch did. The Lady in Shadow is not accustomed to being rejected, especially so publicly. The thought of how upset and hurt she is fills me with genuine sorrow. With that feeling alone, I'm going to help you. Music to my ears. Sulkwith Benoth murmurs softly. Shamir, my dear. We should meet like this more often, informally, in the world of mortals. As for me, I need no specific reasons to, for coming here. I do what I want, when I want, and how I want. But I must admit, the way you showed up my sister Nocticula greatly influenced my decision to be here. The Demon Lord gives you a breezy smile, wetting his lips with the tip of his black tongue. I swore an oath to help the Crusaders, and this oath is stronger than death, the Lich states gloomily. You failed to become the worthy successor I had hoped for, but in your current state, I suppose I can stoop to helping you. A great battle is upon you, child, and I cannot stand to one side and merely observe. Especially not now that you've rejected your mythic power and demonstrated unimaginable strength of will. How exactly are you planning to help me? We've brought reinforcements for your army. Moreover, we're planning to join your march to Threshold when you're ready to go there. Mephistopheles says, answering it on behalf of everyone. We'll assume the functions of your guard and rear guard to ensure that no other powerful beings suddenly decide to join the game. I mean, what chance do they have if I have all of these guys on my side? Welcome to the Crusade. Perfect. We'll accept your hospitality and stay here in the city. We'll wait here until you muster enough forces for the final march. I got achievement for that. Mythic reinforcements. That is really cool. I mean, that alone makes going the legend path worth it. Alright, but I do really want to do Grey Boar's quest now. <laughs> I also want to take my new level, what am I, 34? Character out for a spin. I'll go ahead. Let's go, Greybor. It's a seven hour march to the dry crossroads. I go ahead and quick save as well. And these guys should keep marching as well. Oh, wait. So we have some dragons, some Vrocks, some liches, my main army. Larger beer elementals. I assume that's from the trickster path. I don't think we had a trickster representative there, did we? We had the devil representative, we had the demon, angel, lich, bizada. I don't know what Shamira represents. She probably doesn't represent a specific path. Alright, we get the Azadas over here with this army at the very least. Name in mind. I forgot what they were called before. <laughs>
I'm gonna call it like Dresden's Hope or something. It's not super inspired. Alright, so I'm hoping these armies alone are enough to hold off any approaching armies. But we'll see. Post them in these forts down here. So do Grey Boar's Quest this episode, and then we will do Melia's Quest in the future. Or, I guess next episode, I say the future. I mean, it's still technically the future, but it's not what I meant to say. <laughs> I know what to do. Alright. Oh, I don't like that. He's only up there. Alright, so that's without a critical. Not super impressive. Let's try this way. Uh no you don't, buddy. Who do you think you are? This spell doesn't work like that. This simply business. A calculated risk. I know the way. So pretty good damage, and that's no buffs, just equipment and base damage. Also not a critical, of course. All right, uh, the dry crossroads. An inconspicuous spot on the road that leads west from Dresden, where the road crosses the bed of a long dried river. for a scroll of enlarged person real fast just to here we go oh we can't use it all right apprentice assassin precisely cyber from illusion ira outsider kill him a group of thugs blocks your path they're armed look like they're ready to fight the leader faces you with his hands on his hips we didn't think you were going to show if you wouldn't do that to us, would you, Greybor? Where's the target? I know you're professional. I've never worked with you before. So listen up. I'm watching you. No funny business, or I'll make you bleed. Got it? True. I haven't worked uh, together before, so I'll give you a warning of my own. If you threaten me again, I'll cut out your heart and shove it up your butt. Got it? The game bursts out laughing. The leader nods his approval. He seems alright. I think we can work with him. Respect. No wonder she... He raises his eyebrow pointedly. Has such a high opinion of you. Hope your friends won't get cold feet when it's time to act. Don't you worry about my bunch. Not our first hunt. As long as the target's where it's supposed to be, they'll do what they've been told. Is she here now? Probably. You know she doesn't like to show up too early. She's smart. Wants to scout out the area first. I respect that. Once we've cornered the target, she'll be here. Or not. It's impossible to tell with her. 
Is everything ready? Now wait just a minute. You said that you'd be in charge of all the preparations. You told us to wait for your arrival and follow all of your instructions. So why don't you scout out the area and figure out what needs to be done. We'll at least need three places for the crew to hide. We'll need a good location for our archer as well. And that trail over there bothers me. That makes it too easy for our target to escape. He points to a trail that branches off from the road and disappears into the woods. You'll need to see if there's a way to block that path somehow. I'll go scope out the area. Go ahead, boss. We'll just sit here and await your orders. I'll do as you tell me. There's a large crack in the trunk of this tree. The well-aimed blows could cause it uh, to fall and block the trail. These trees can hide more than a solitary hunter. You can seal an entire wagon. These thick bushes would provide ample cover for an ambush. Waste not a minute. This is a suitable position for an archer that overlooks the entire area. Now this rock is an excellent hiding place, and it will provide good cover against range attacks. Follow your instinct. So then double check to make sure there's nothing else. I didn't see anything else, but doesn't mean it's not lurking around here somewhere. Well, how's it going, boss? Had a chance to look around yet. Any orders? Uh, point to the cracked tree. There's a damaged tree by the trail. We need to chop it down and block the path. That's not a bad idea. We'll block the path so that no one can get through. Point to the nearby hill. Your archer should take a position up on that hill. Sounds good to me. Later turns to one of his henchmen and mutters. Oh, what are you just standing around for? Your ugly mug up on that hill. The ugly mug grabs a bow, definitely checks the bowstring in the quiver, then strolls off nonchalantly in the direction of the hill. A point to the bushes in the massive rock. Place your crew in the bushes along the road, behind those trees, and behind that huge boulder. Can do. Those are some good locations, nice and hidden. Can't see them from the road. That's funny, that's exactly where I saw them from. Now, the leader turns to his henchman and calls out a commanding voice. All right, stop sitting around on your butts. Go where you're told and lay low. I better not hear or see any of you. Guess we're set then. Time to lay low. You know your stuff, Greyboar. You can't fight your decisions. You made some good calls. I respect that. Now kill him. Everything's ready. Now we just have to wait for the main character to appear on the stage. This is the first time you have seen Horzala in person. She gazes at you triumphantly. You're not as smart as everyone thinks. She gloats mockingly. You've walked straight into a trap set by your own associate. Well done, Greyboar. You've lured the commander into our trap, just as you promised. I must admit, I'm surprised. I thought it'd be more difficult. Did you expect anything less? As I said, when I take a job, it gets done. You wanted the commander, and I brought him to you. I thought we got along well. Why do you want me dead? Rosala's voice rises triumphantly. Father will see how wrong he was about me. He'll reward me with his favor when I present him with your head. I'll be the greatest of Baphomet's daughters once more, and that half-mortal upstart Vorlesh will crawl on her knees before me. I brought the armies of the Lady in Shadow, 
and I'll cut down to Scar's lackeys and take his army for myself. And once that's done, it'll be your turn, Crusaders. I'll make you kneel before the Lord of Beasts. It's very brave of you to appear in person. I applaud your courage. I wanted to personally witness your demise. Rosala snaps angrily. You think I'm scared of you? Ha. Huh. You have no idea how powerful I am. Hepsamir was nothing compared to me. And now, my father has freed me from these those accursed seals. I am no longer bound. I am Baphomet's daughter, the strongest of his offspring. I have reclaimed my rightful place, and now I will destroy you. Yaz, why are you here? Do you really want to kill me? It's not like he had any uh, choice in the matter, or is that like crows triumphantly. This halfway belongs to me, and so does his guild. After you killed Hepsamira, Baphomet gave me back my power. I was restored to my rightful place, and Yaz, who once considered himself my master, became my property. She cracks her knuckles, as of the former leader of the Assassin's Guild to cower in fear. Yaz desperately tries to save face. He forces on a smile. I'm sorry, but the bounty on your head was just too tempting I couldn't resist. You don't like Corzala. Why don't we kill her together? Kill her together. <laughs> There's a flash of interest in Yaz's eyes, but it fades immediately. He looks at Horzala regretfully and shakes his head. I never bet on the losing side. Greybor, you betrayed me. The guild I joined, with your consent, I might add, asked me to do a job. You offered me a sizable reward, and our, hmm, partnership has been less than satisfactory. So I'm breaking our contract. Oh, and you're about to be killed by my new employers. I instructed Greyboard to lure you here. He has performed his task admirably. Uh, you will not leave this place alive. Greyboard doesn't even look at you. He's listening to Herzala intently. Hmm. Alas, you cannot overcome your evil desires. Gribor smirks. I'm not committing some terrible atrocity. I'm just doing my job. Maybe we can talk things through and solve our disagreements peacefully. There's no need for violence. Ha, huh, how amusing. You're going to fall on your knees and beg for mercy. Give him a good beating before you finish him off. Gribor smirks ominously. It won't be easy for them to carry out that order, because they themselves are actually already dead. Commander, now. Pulling a whistle decorated with runes from his pocket, the dwarf brings it to his lips and produces a high-pitched trill. Let's make this quick. Alright, we do need to mount up. Over here, and I guess while we're standing here waiting for that, we can do that. Uh, Greybor, attack. It's your time to cease to exist. This should do it. Victory is worth the. Pain. He's almost dead. Great. He can take out at least the assassin. I'll be happy. <laughs> That's right. We do a crazy amount of damage. Oh, we can't get our mount past the tree, can we? Withdraw. Uh, maybe we can. <laughs> Rosala's curled up on the ground in anguish. She slams her fist down angrily. This isn't how it was supposed to end. Why? Why are you so strong, mortal? Shorty, you little worm. You betrayed me. You've done what I asked, but have given you everything you ever wanted. Our victory is certain. This will hurt. Bucephalus? What are you doing, man? Uh, 
I assume Graybore has more to say here. A calculated risk. Oh, is it bugged out because he died? Yeah, so I think the quest bugged out because Greybore died. He's supposed to say something here. But she's going to keep standing up because... Greybore. So I think I'm going to call the episode here. I'm going to redo this section. We'll just pick up here uh, at the end of the fight with Greybore still alive. So for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.